Uh, I call this regular session of the Hillsborough School Board to order. We'll begin as we always do with our flag salute. As we gather here today in person and virtually, we would like to take a moment to acknowledge that our district service area is on the occupied traditional homelands of the Atholity Indigenous people, lands we now call Washington County in the state of Oregon. We thank them and their ancestors for being the original stewards of this land. We take this opportunity to offer gratitude for the opportunity to learn, work, and be a community on this land. We acknowledge the sy systemic policies of colonization that have led to genocide, relocation, and assimilation that have impacted indigenous and native families, both past and present, and those who will be affected in the future. According to Kalapuya tradition, people have lived here since time immemorial. Indigenous people still live here today, having persevered through US-sponsored war, displacement, genocide, and oppression. We honor the indigenous people whose traditional and ancestral homelands we stand on, the Tualatin Kalapuya, the Kalamet, the Clackamas, Tumwater, Malala, Bands of the Chinook, and many other indigenous nations of the Columbia River. We believe it is important to acknowledge the ancestors of this place and recognize that we are here because of the sacrifices forced upon them. In remembering these communities, we honor the legacy, their lives, and their ancestors. We also recognize the urban indigenous native first people communities living in the metro area, which includes over 400 tribal nations. We also have a couple of proclamations this evening. Uh, and Director Lopez, I believe, is first. Can you guys hear me okay? No? Not really. It's supposed to be on. It's on. It's on. It's on. It just has to be turned up a little bit. Probably it. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'll try to speak a little louder until I, you let me know, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me okay back there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. The Hillsborough School District recognizes that principals and assistant principals work tirelessly each day as visionaries, assessment experts, community builders, public relation, relations experts, budget analysts, facility managers, special programs administrators, and guardians of various legal, contractual, and policy mandates and initiatives. The Hillsborough School District appreciates that principals and assistant principals work collaboratively with both teachers and district staff to develop and maintain high school curriculum, sta curriculum standards, develop mission statements, and set performance goals and objectives for schools to achieve educational excellence. The Hillsborough School District honors exemplary principals and assist, assistant principals who have succeeded in providing high quality learning opportunities for students, as well as their outstanding contributions to the profession. The Hillsborough School District celebrates that Principals Month gives an opportunity to honor and recognize the contribution of all school principals and assistant principals to the success of every student in the district. The Board of Directors of the Hillsborough School District do hereby proclaim the month of October 2021 be National Principals Month. We urge all community members to join us in recognizing the many contributions and achievements of principals and assistant principals to the development of prosperity of our community. We have one more, Director Pollock. Welcome and good evening to all. The Hillsborough School District recognizes that a week in October has been designated to increase awareness of the importance of safe schools and that it is critical for schools and communities to work together to ensure that our children are safe from harm and able to thrive in their academic environment. The Hillsborough School District knows that excellence in education is dependent on safe, secure, and 
peaceful school settings. The Hillsboro School District recognizes that all children deserve to learn in an environment where they feel safe and free from harm. The Hillsboro School District encourages schools, communities, and organizations to work together to stop bullying and cyberbullying and put an end to hatred and racism by increasing awareness of the prevalence and impact of all forms of bullying on children of all ages. The Hillsboro School District believes that it is important to focus, on public, to focus public attention on school safety and identity, develop and promote answers to these critical issues. And the Board of Directors of the Hillsboro School District do hereby proclaim the week of October 17th through the 23rd, 2021 to be Safe Schools Week. We urge all community members to join us in recognizing that we must work together to make our schools safe, secure, and peaceful places for learning, teaching, and working. Thank you. Great. Uh, I'll take this opportunity to also mention that uh, Director Martinez will not be joining us tonight. And do we have one or more student representatives joining us virtually, Rose? Only one. All right. Cool. Uh, and we have a, a way for her to raise her hand if she wants to interact. Great. All right. Uh, at this point, do we have a motion to uh, move forward? I move that Board of Directors approve the agenda as printed. Second. It's been moved in by uh, Director Allen and seconded by Director Lopez that we approve the agenda as printed. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Do I gavel there? Is that a thing you do? No. All right. Cool. Uh, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> Might be fun, though. All right. Uh, next up, uh, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move that the board of directors. It's been moved by Director Kim and seconded by Director Lopez that we uh, approve the consent agenda as printed. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right, that motion passes. I guess the other one did too. I didn't say that, but it did. All right, next up is audience time. And based on input, I've heard that we have none tonight, right? So I won't be reading that. We also allocated time for the public testimony regarding the renaming of the Miller Education Complex, and there is none in that as well, correct? All right, so then, we will just move to our first action item, the renaming of the Miller Education Complex. And for anybody looking to make that motion, the names are on page three, four in the packet. So. I move that the board of directors select the names Oak Street Campus, Pathway Center, David Hill Building, Miller Community Center, Hillsborough Community Garden, as the names for MEP for the 30 day review. I'll second. Okay. It's been moved, and moved by Director Lopez and seconded by Director Allen that we rename, uh, or wait, the board that we, the rename? Select, select the names. Select. select the names Oak Street Campus, Pathway Center. David Hill Building and Miller Community Center and the existing Hillsborough Community Garden as the name for the MEC complex be placed on 30 day review. Is there any discussion? I just want to say thank you, Casey, for the process. I know it's been long and especially during COVID to do engagement. I appreciate all the effort of all staff. Thank you. I said I would join in on that chorus. Yes, uh, the, we had a, for those of you who may not have been following us last time, we had a very robust discussion regarding this. So the fact that we're not having much discussion this time is not a surprise because we kind of hashed a lot of things out during the uh, my virtual session. But yeah, um, so thank you very much for the process and uh, the in the previous packets. Thank you for all of the data 
and the breakdown. So it's very great to see all that. So, all right. If there's no further discussion, uh, please sign, uh, signify approval by saying aye. Uh, aye. Anyone opposed? All right. The motion passes. I feel like Eric used to be All right. All right. Uh, our next one. So, our next one is to nominate a member for the OSBA, right? And yeah. uh, all right. So, I would entertain any motion. That somebody might have. I would love to set forth directors on the young folks. Keep pushing the button. Turn it off. It's been moved by Director Allen and seconded by Director Thomas that the Board of Directors nominate Erica Lopez for the OSBA Board of Directors position number 20. Is there any discussion? Uh, you don't have to. I think pushing the button turns your microphone off. Oh. Um, uh, it's my understanding that uh, should we not choose to nominate Director Lopez for this position, she would not become vice president. So it's it's sort of contingent on her continuing as a member of the board. So should she continue as a member of the board, she would be the next vice president of the organization. If I weren't to clarify, if I were to nominate. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the, the process is we, we nominate her tonight. The the home board or whatever you would like to call it nominates a person for the OSBA board or the legislative policy committee. And then all of the boards in our region have to vote uh, on that person um, before they actually assume the role. Uh, and it, I also saw that uh, should she continue on the OSBA board, Director Lopez would then move into the vice presidency role. Director Kim. Additional work that you have done in, in I'm so so thrilled. Anybody else? I have a question after the moment. Uh, okay. Any other discussion? I too would like to thank Erica for service on the OSBA board. She has been a tremendous representative of our region, and I look forward to her continuing. All right. Uh, having moved, I already did the move and second discussion. So all those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? Yeah. Oh. So the motion carries six to one. All right. Uh, five to one. Oh, five to one. We're missing a person. Thank you. Uh, Clarifying question. Uh, is it on the website, on the OSBA website, that you're actually already the vice president? Is no. that the problem? No. No, I'm giving an announcement. Got it. I was already. Okay. Okay. Okay, then my follow up question then is if you are moving to a position as vice president, then does that mean that there is another position that is open? No. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, 
We also have an opportunity to nominate someone for the Legislative Policy Committee. Uh, do I have any nominations in that regard? I move that the Board of Directors nominate Mark, Mark Watson for the OSBA Legislative Policy Committee position number 15. Second. It has been moved by Director Lopez and seconded by Director Kim that the Board of Directors nominate Mark Watson for the OSBA Legislative Policy Committee position number 15. Is there any discussion? Okay. I would just like to say that I've also appreciated Mark's service in this, especially just the amount of um, I think onboarding and work to learn the legislative process, how to be effective. And we don't have uh, legislative um, staff that does this work. Our board really does this as our, we take this on as a responsibility to advocate on behalf of Edmonton and our district. And so I just appreciate uh, you taking on this role and really for the rest of our board to continue to be involved and pick up the opportunity to advocate Dr. Allen? See anybody else? We good? Uh, I would just like to add, yes, thank you for the nomination, and I look forward to continuing to doing the work. And Director Lopez is entirely right. We we are not one of the districts that can afford a lobbyist, so it basically falls to all of us. So well, I consider myself our representative on the policy committee, and we'll bring back updates when we work on the uh, legislative priorities for the upcoming session. It really does fall to all of us to be in communication with our legislators. Um, all 15 or so that touch our district so it's we tend to think of it as three or four and it's really quite a few people that touch our district so um i look forward to uh in-person trips to salem with many of you to advocate on behalf of salem adequate funding i see staff with their hands and that's awesome because uh nothing resonates like the voice of a student when we're down there i'm telling you it's they never want to hear from us they only want to hear from you uh, all right. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5 1. Uh, right. So the packet and the agenda, I think. Oh, was it? Oh, so I just haven't gone far enough yet. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yep. All right. So there was some discussion. So the we are now talking about adopting our board goals. You'll find them on page 50 of the packet if you're so inclined. I move that the board of directors approve the rest. That, ad that we adopt the, the, our goals for the 2021 uh, and 2022 year. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded that the board of directors adopt their board goals for the 2021-2022 school year. Is there any discussion? Yes, I just wanted to also just say thank you to our staff for putting together the RFP for our strategic uh, plan. That's something I'm really excited about. I think it's going to be something to help um, have that vision and mission of our district for the next um, few years, five years on that. Um, and I'm really excited to get to the engagement and um, work, help 
example, on elevating your skin tone. That's one of the goals I wanted to appreciate the work um, that you're done quickly. Thank you. Any further discussion? Um, I just want to say that I think I can speak for, and they can tell me if they're wrong, or if I'm wrong, because I'm one of them is on the call. But I think I can speak for all three student representatives when I say that I'm really encouraged by the steps that this board is taking to make sure that we are really actively using student voice in all of our processes, and to make sure that we are keeping that an integral part of our processes. Which I have just come to the beginning, doing our best to. I'm really encouraged by how things have been going. Thank you all for your support in this. Any further discussion? All right. Uh, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion carries. 5 1. Right. Next up is. Sure. Sure. I have a question. Um, I think I missed my question. Oh, sure. Question. Of the big four, of we're number four in the state, do the other three that are above us, Portland, Salem, Kaiser, and Beaverton, do they have their own? Beaverton and TPS, I don't know about Salem. Yeah, they do. Salem does? Salem, Portland, and Beaverton. Okay. Um, I'm trying to understand why the fourth largest business is not having a lot of money. So they make it a part of their budget? Yeah, if there is a big business, yeah, of course. If, if we can put it on an agenda item for future further discussion, I just want to be on uh, board with our. I think I would like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Our next uh, item is the Brookwood lot line adjustment. Do we have a presentation, Adam or Casey? Yeah, me, not Adam. Okay. Um, so a lot of information in your packet about this. So um, if you remember uh, back when we started the process of the 2017 bond and going through all of our building projects with the city of Hillsborough or Washington County, as we were submitting those uh, permits, the city and county and those jurisdictions requested that any, any updates or um, deficiencies in our lot lines for our properties be corrected at that time so we get a clean moving forward um, this is accurate so like in the case of Brookwood as you can see a couple of things one the deed had our old district designation so one of the things here is to correct you know Hillsborough School District you know 1J the next thing there on the west edge of the Brookwood property I'm going to do my best to kind of demonstrate this, but there's several property owners that their backyards face Brookwood Elementary School. And all of those lot lines are a little bit different, so kind of jagged. So if we wanted to put a fence up on our property, on our property line, the fence would go in and out and in and out and in and out. Part of this is to make that one solid line and it, there's a description of this in your packet so that we don't have that. And so what it entails is, you know, maybe there's a property owner that has three or four feet that would make that line whole, non-usable district property. So we're trying to get that finished right now. So they're just a singular property line and not all those ins and outs. So that's kind of the short version of what we're trying to do and ask the board to do tonight. Any questions? Casey, do I presume that we've had a number of negotiations with property owners on this subject? We have not, we have um, 
talk to the property. There's not a negotiation as far as we're not asking them to be compensated for the, the fee or anything. It's just we, we want to make it a straight line. Okay. Totally they're makes sense. Losing. That's what I wanted There's to say. Oh, about. sorry, I missed your question. Yeah, they're they're not losing property. They're, I guess they're retaining what the property they've had for years and years. Yes, yes. thank you. Right, if you're out there, the line is pretty straight with the fences that exist now, except yes. for the actual lot line. Yes. Is not a company. So this will basically make the property line the fence line. Right. Makes yeah. sense. And we're not asking any of them to concede any property to us. We're conceding property to them. Yeah, a little bit. So in each one of them, you know, some yeah. one of them yeah. is like 300 square feet. One of them's 800 square feet. Yeah. So it, it, it's not a lot. Right. Any further questions? Does anybody have a motion? I move that the Board of Directors approve resolution number Brooklyn Elementary School, current school district entities, approved complaints property to the residents on the west side of the campus and the reflecting new lot line. Is that Erica? Yeah. All right, it's been moved and seconded that the Board of Directors approve resolution number 21, 2021-01005. The moved and seconded that the board of directors approve resolution number 2021-001 to retitle the Brookwood Elementary School in the current school district entity's name, approve the conveyance of property to the residents on the west side of the school campus, and approve the filing of a new deed for the campus reflecting the lot lines by Director Allen and seconded by Director Lopez. Is there any further discussion? I was just going to ask. Um, Casey, if this is the last for this particular property of adjustments on Brooklyn. Yes. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Next up, Casey, I think you're going to take Adam's place again discussing a hill high, right? Yep. Uh, similar concept. Um, pre 2017 bonds, the, uh, the Hillsborough High School campus was broken up into six different tax lots. I don't know the history, but it's probably somewhere in the packet. So this is to consolidate those as this, you know, for the property owner. So it's going to be one singular tax lot. Do you have any questions? All right. Does anybody have a motion they'd like to make? I move that the Board of Directors approve the Hillsborough High School bargain and sell deed for lot consolidation. Okay. It's been moved by Director Lopez and seconded by... Uh, Director, yeah, it was Monique, right? And seconded by Director Ward that the Board of Directors approve the Hillsborough High School bargain and sale deed for lot consolidation. Wow. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, that's all of our action. Reports and discussions. Michelle, do you have a financial report you'd like to share with us? People I'm on. Thank you. Um, and of course, I'm here to answer any questions you might have about the financial information, which similarly is going to um, vary a little bit as we move through the months this year as compared to last year. Any questions? I 
Thank you. Thank you as always, and thanks to your team. Next up, administration regulation update with Mike. All right, thank you. We do have a couple of administrative rules here that require uh, the board to be informed of this. It does not require any board action whatsoever, but uh, we do want to keep you apprised and uh, notify you what's going on here. So the first one has to do with procedures for school and district closure or delayed openings. Um, you'll see on that AR that uh, really the extent of the changes uh, have to do with changing some of the uh, titles of people involved in the decision making. Uh, that was that was really those are really the main changes that took place there. There was a few cleanup in term of uh, in in terms of the terminology used, but pretty straightforward on that one. Um, the second one has to do with tuition rates for non-resident students, and uh, that is something that um, is reviewed every year. And um, we have uh, updated the tuition rates for this coming year. And really, that's it. Uh, just a simple notification. That's all that's required. Do we have any questions? Do we know uh, section six? Do we know how much the increase was? I'm presuming it was an increase. Yes. Um, Michelle, do you happen to have that off the top of your head? Thank you. That's sufficient. It was just a question. It was a four percent. I guess I have a question. So they're AR, so that they, they should be available through the website after we after tonight. Correct. Because so like this, this little block of information on the. Is it 83? Yeah. But with with how we do school closures, like that when people go, how do you, why are we up at work? <laughs> people should know this. So <laughs> like on social media, once this is up there, I, I intend to amplify that. Okay. Starts at 3.15 in the morning. Okay. It's like, it seems earlier, but yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, wow, we're speeding along here. Next up, HCU, HEA, and I see both of them available online. Who would like to go first? Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, good. Um, I will go first. Um, so good evening and welcome back to the 2021-22 school year. We've been back to school for a few weeks, but this is our first school board meeting of the year. So welcome back. Um, we are happy to say that HCU did reach an agreement with the district on an MOU for a safe return to school, as Connor was talking about in the work session. And we are excited to be moving forward with a successor bargaining sessions. Uh, we have a lot of uphill battles ahead of us. One of the biggest challenge challenges we are facing will be staff shortage. We are looking at a shortage of bus drivers, kitchen staff, custodians, facilities and maintenance, education assistants, special education assistants, and admin support staff. We have staff resigning and retiring almost every day. This leaves every classification short on staff. As we heard in the work session, we have about 50 open positions for both classified and licensed. Bus drivers are short drivers almost every year, but this year seems to be a little more dire. This is a national problem with both schools and also public transportation. I don't have an answer to this problem, but HCU is willing to work with the district to think outside the box and try to solve this problem and all of the staff shortages that we are facing. We also need more classroom assistance along with subs for those positions. We have SEA positions that can't be filled due to a lack of qualified candidates. The current SEAs that we have are doing the best that they can to help support the students they have been asked to work with. Some have large numbers in classes and some have multiple classes that they are moving through to help support the students with what they need. 
and they are all doing a great job with what they can do. Staff is helping staff and that is great, but at the rate we are going, if things don't change, more staff will get burned out. So we need to look out for both classified staff and licensed staff. We have long-standing classified staff that are leaving the district due to not feeling valued. Uh, we have staff that have been with the district for 10, 10 to 18 years and they're leaving because they're not feeling valued. That is adding to the shortage. The district needs to look at different ways to help support the staff to avoid additional staff burnout. We have many staff members that are already experiencing burnout and they are leaving to other districts and other jobs. We are happy to be back in the buildings working with students and it's great to see how happy the kids are to be back with their friends. Um, so again, HCU is willing to work with the district. Um, just let us know how we can help and what we can do. So thank you. Hi, Jill Golay, Hillsborough Education Association president. And thank you um, for the opportunity and welcome back everyone. We too, as HCU and Melody just shared, we actually um, were able to have a tentative agreement on our fall 21 return to school in the brick and mortar setting. And the body voted on the um, MOU last week and ratified that. And so it was nice to have that finished in a very timely manner so that it, the members can look at that as they go through trying to navigate every day, which is so different, you know, with um, a lot of students being quarantined, there's a lot of um, questions as to how to navigate that. So it's nice to have that MOU as a resource. And it's really nice to have the safety officers in the buildings, the designated principals to help with uh, just knowing who to contact if there's a concern about how to support a student wearing a mask, or if a student isn't feeling well, or if parents have any questions or concerns. One of the issues that I've been hearing this last week is where to go get tested if they are concerned as a teacher is concerned if they are COVID positive or if they are symptomatic. And it was nice to have an opportunity to speak today with Travis Ryman and he shared that yes, in fact, teachers, if they are symptomatic and feel they need to leave and be tested that they can go to the Century Health Clinic. And so it was really um, pleasantly um, nice to hear that because um, I know they've tried in the past and we're I've been told that they were turned away and that the clinic was a little bit overwhelmed with um, the staff trying to get support there. And so um, it's great that that is being kind of figured out. And as you know, last Monday was a little chilly. Um, it's warm this last Monday, but the week before was a little chilly. And if we, unfortunately, we had some buildings that started their day without power. I believe Century High School, uh, Reedville, Rosedale, uh, Indian Hills Elementary, and due to a, a car accident hitting a, a pole. And so unfortunately there wasn't power at those sites and um, pretty chilly out, outside for um, teachers and students to be in like 54 degrees weather. So um, thankfully the power was turned back on pretty readily um, once school had started. And um, we appreciate just um, knowing, I appreciate knowing what was going on that morning because I was getting a lot of calls from teachers really concerned about being in the building without the um, HVAC and ventilation, you know, as we deal with COVID. Uh, we're looking forward to our bargaining. We're excited to um, uh, share all of our articles in this next session and then start countering. And we're hoping to expedite the bargaining process. And uh, Sarah Moskov has a goal of being finished before the end of the year. So we'll try really hard to not let her down. She's our um, uh, my Unicert consultant. So thank you. And um, that's all I have for this evening. All right, thank you. Uh, next up is discussion time. Uh, we start with the students. Do we have Director Chen with us? And student representative, we don't call her director. All right. Right. Michelle, do you have anything you'd like to add tonight? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, thanks for calling me Director Chen. This feels very awesome to <laughs> be called that. <laughs> I kid. Um, at first, um, I think it's uh, for the Safe Schools Week. I think it's really cool that we're we that you guys are doing that. Um, though I would like to know further about like what 
we are doing for that, but I'll reach out specifically for that. And then um, I think it was very nice to hear from, I think for um, the accelerated learning to hear about like the elementary, middle and high school level, like the different things that we were doing about those. And I think that hopefully those make a lot of progress. I think for the most part, I don't really have much else to say. Um, I'll mostly just be reaching out to individual people, but I don't have any major comments. Thanks. Representative Tronco, do you have anything you want to add? Um, not particularly. Besides, I'd like to offer my thanks to the community members who came to watch our meeting tonight. It's always nice to see people here, even when it's not the most controversial of issues, community members are just interested in showing up and understanding how the government process works. That's how I ended up here as a student representative. And we feel hopeful for our schools are going to continue work in the future. Then I've asked you. Hello. Sorry, I got here a little bit late. <laughs> The meeting just ended and I got here like 10 minutes ago, less than 10 minutes ago, but thank you to the community members who did come out. Um, it's really nice to see that there's members that are, are that are involved in our community and are really present here. And I hope this is a good meeting for everybody. Hey, you're up, superintendent's time. All right, thank you. So it's been a pleasure to be able to get uh, back into classrooms and uh, just see the joy that the students are experiencing by being back in person. Um, it really is a, a game changer to have all of the kids back and just the excitement that they bring. Um, staff as well. Staff are excited that the kids are back, that they're together in person, and they're, they're just so enjoying that. Um, not to say that that has not come without challenges, because there are certainly challenges that go with that. And we continue to be very mindful of all the safety mitigation strategies that are necessary for us to keep our students safe. Um, we have our staff and our uh, school administrators that are engaging in contact tracing on a regular basis, um, making their districts making decisions regarding quarantining. Um, and that just takes an inordinate amount of time. And our principals have done a nice job of balancing those needs regarding student safety. And while still um, working to remain focused on improving instruction and student achievement. So my hat really is off to the school staff who are, who are making all of that go. The administrators there, the teachers there, the, our classified staff there, um, just continue to show their support for students and their commitment level. And it's just so appreciated. Uh, we've had some requests over the last couple of weeks to have a dashboard community could look at that would illustrate the number of COVID case, uh, cases, positive cases that are present throughout the district, as well as in individual schools. That will be up and running in the next couple of weeks. So um, be looking for that. And that will, it'll be a easy to read, a simple a dashboard that uh, should answer the needs. We, our goal is to remain transparent on that and um, to give people the information that they're requesting. Um, Another challenge that we have, and you heard uh, HCU mention it uh, when Melody uh, was speaking, but just the whole issue around staffing and the challenges that go with that. Um, right now we have, uh, Dale mentioned it earlier today, but we've got over 50 openings for classified staff currently in the district. And uh, we are indeed, Melanie encourages us to think outside the box. We certainly are doing that. And um, we're um, digging deep into the bag of tricks to get the word out there and to engage with folks who may be working for employment. We would love to have them, particularly in the areas that we do need bus drivers, we do need um, assistance, student assistance uh, at the school level, and we need nutrition services. And we also have some teaching openings still. So um, I'm going to keep saying that everywhere I have the opportunity to talk into a microphone so that in the hopes that uh, someone out there knows somebody that, uh, maybe looking for work in one of those categories, we'd love to hear from them. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank um, just our staff who continue to care for our students. They are not only focused on the academic needs as they always are, but just the emotional needs and the physical safety of our students continues to be of the utmost, utmost concern and their, their ability to manage all of those needs and focus on those areas. I'm just so appreciative. And finally, I'll wrap up by saying thank you to Erica and Mark for your willingness to engage at the state level. I think anytime we have uh, board members who are 
working on behalf of the state, um, we have the opportunity to get uh, some influence out there that not only impacts Oregon in a positive way, but it also impacts Hillsborough in a positive way. So all of those commitments that are made are just on top of the work that you're doing and the hours that you're, uh, that you're um, engaged in on a regular basis. So thanks to both of you. All right. Start on the end, Dr. Lopez, would you like to have a discussion time? Yeah, I just wanted to um, mention on the OSB leadership how we just had our meeting, our board meeting last, last actually two weeks ago, and um, we also brought in a facilitator, and OSB is also in a, tra in a point in transition and uh, really figuring out how to support our members how to bring the value of what, what this membership does to our districts and our elected leaders and ensuring that you are provided with training opportunities, that you are provided with a community of peers that you can learn from. And um, that's really something that I'm looking forward to and working. And um, if I do get elected by our other districts to be on, to be continue to serve, as vice chair, I am also going to be responsible for chairing the legislative um, committee. And um, the, one of the things that I'm really excited about and I'm looking forward to is figuring out a way of, of creating training and onboarding opportunities for electeds to understand how to advocate at that legislative level, how to testify, how do you even enter cases. And hopefully as we learn that process, we can also um, create opportunities for our community members. It does seem a little sometimes intimidating to talk and to go through that process, but how do we make it more accessible for people to be able to tell their story and, and advocate at that state level? So I'm looking forward to, for, towards that opportunity. And um, I also wanted to just say uh, thanks specifically to our staff and um, all of the work that they're doing, we're doing things that we've never had to do before, all while maintaining our school open and ensuring that we're having as many um, uh, opportunities for our kids to continue to participate. And I just ask for our community to have faith of going through this process, of the work, of trying to do better every day, and just the, just the sheer tenacity of our team and our staff to continue to improve and just looking today when we arrived and saw the new technology in the room and the new setup and it's like wow we're just continuing to get better at how we're providing our meetings how we're meeting the obstacles that we have mm -hmm. with hybrid and in -person. so i'm just very thankful for our staff for continuing to do that and i as well will share everywhere that i can that we are recru recruiting for staff and i will pass on um, that the word on there and just as a request for a future topic, I was going to ask if we could have a rapid test pilot. Oh, it's just you? Screening, yeah. If we can have just a follow up of like how that works or if it's still ongoing, how it works. Yeah. Sure. Yes, I'd like to say thank you as well to the staff. I appreciate uh, the rapid response to uh, all my support tactics for this round and all the hard work that you do. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I think I, I I haven't yet missed a year, so I just give a shout out to the greatest principal in the district at which we were all Walters. Um, she's amazing, and I'm sure everybody knows that, but just as a reminder to the community that uh, that's the best school, which is the best principal, and the best teachers. Um, all right, so there's that. And then also just a, a huge appreciation again to Erica for being willing to step up into this role. Um, there's so many new things that are going to happen as, as you sort of like say yes to one thing, people ask you to do another thing, and you get kind of drawn in, and it's taken a significant amount of time. So just, I really do appreciate that very much. And I want to make sure that 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 said publicly. I also have been kind of like on a time travel in my mind today is the dinosaur in the room earlier thinking about when Travis and I first met. And that was, I think, seven years ago, maybe eight with the CCAC. Like, that is nuts. Um, 
just mind boggling. And then um, when we were um, appointing folks to the to nominate for the LSBA board and the legislative policy committee, I was thinking back to before I was on the board and I was thinking about running, I sat down and I had coffee um, with a woman named Karen Ortman. And uh, many of you may not know who she is because you, know, you are not the dinosaur in the room but right now. Uh, but she was a board member for 20 years. And uh, I, you know, I asked for you know, her words of wisdom as I was throwing my, my hat into the ring, as they say. And she said, uh, it's very, very important to make sure that board members um, in Hillsborough, number one, engage in training, take advantage of every training opportunity that you're given, and number two, make sure that board members are engaged in advocacy, um, including OSBA and NSDA, and, and encourage your fellow board members to take advantage of every opportunity. And so uh, I don't think we've ever been wanting for folks who've been willing to put in that extra time. And that time. But, um, I think that was good advice. I've always uh, tried to feed it as much as I could. And I just appreciate so much the team that we have. And, and Thank you, Erica. Yeah. Okay, well, first and foremost, I'm so sorry for meeting the uh, work session a couple weeks ago. Uh, we had a personal issue that came up, but we are all safe and sound and home again, so it is all good. Um, I look forward to the day where COVID-19 is no longer dominating our conversation. Uh, but I do want to commend our team for being so creative in the way our students. And I was recently asked, you know, at serving on the school board, um, what has been one of the biggest lessons that I've learned over the last, you know, year and a half? And as I've reflected on that question, you know, the thing that comes to me um, and the way that I've seen our district operate is the importance of not wavering in our mission to serve our students and to serve our students well. And I think that I have seen that uh, through and through again from uh, our teachers, our classified staff, to our administrators, to our cabinet, to our superintendent, Mike Sott, and to our board members and our student press. I think that we our focus on providing opportunities for our students, making sure our students are safe, even as we have uh, considered our return to fall, you know, making sure that we're prioritizing students entering back into the classroom, keeping that as the focus uh, and not wavering in that, I think has yielded a lot of the wonderful things that have come out of this incredibly difficult season. And I do want to just celebrate, even in uh, these, these hard times, there is so much to celebrate and much of the work um, that you all have been doing is, uh, is making the biggest difference for these students and, and for our community. So um, I, I do want to, you know, there there's, seems to be a dark cloud sometimes with everything that's happening around the conversations with COVID, but um, just want to say that you all, it sounds cheesy, but really you all have been the light, I think, for our students and for our community members. So thank you all. Thank you, Chair Watson. Um, I did have uh, just one thing that I wanted to bring up uh, that I received from a uh, district parent. And I would like to know if we could get uh, the protocols for notification of potential exposure when that occurred. Um, there was clearly some miscommunication and or non-communication uh, with regard to breakthrough cases of COVID uh, for vaccinated children um, to the extent that the parent felt like they'd actually gone to the school and the school didn't even know about it and other parents told them. So what that tells me is, and because I've, I've been there, done that, um, what it is, is everyone may not be under, fully understanding the notification pro, uh, protocol. And I would just like to know what that protocol is so that I can, one, respond to our parents. And two, so that perhaps we could ask us to, to kind of re-engage the entire district, administrative and staff, so that everyone understands what the notification protocol is. 
uh, the timing, the time factors that are involved in that, because there is a time factor involved when there is a potential exposure, and how that gets uh, related to the folks that are actually uh, involved, and that has to be contact, contact tracing as well. So I just wanted to ask that that we kind of look into that. I know that we're already doing everything that we can, but um, anytime it falters, then that just simply means that we probably need to go in and plug in with some more education to some more folks. Um, and I'm happy to share the email so that we could get to the crux of the matter, but I wanted to bring that up on behalf of our, uh, our parents in the district. And I just want to say thank you to the three individuals that came up to our working session. It was very, um, very, very, uh, positive to feel and to hear. And by the way, Christy's not the only one. She was at Katama first. Thank you very much. Yeah. My little boy was at Katama. Thank you. Thank you. She's awesome. Um, but I cannot, I'm, I'm going to say it. I am thrilled to be here, to be working for you and working for you and working with you. And I mean that. Just first, you know, Tobias Tiger. Send. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, I want to thank everybody for your patience with me not being able to tell who's making a motion. This is our first uh, session with in person action items. So uh, apologize for having to ask several times who's asking what or saying what. So uh, thanks for that. Um, for uh, those of you who don't know, I guess uh, so I'm just recently back and uh, from a fairly long trip. And other than, uh, and so I want to also thank you for uh, your patience in allowing me to preside over the meet, you know, my first meeting of the academic year while not anywhere near our time zone. Um, so thank you for allowing me to do that. Uh, people did say, no, you planned the trip, you should go ahead and take it. Forget about the house. Oh, for those of you who don't know my house, well, burned down is too strong because parts of it are still standing. But my house is, uh, sure, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, gone-ish. All of our stuff is good. So everything I'm wearing, I bought in the last few years. Um, so for what it's worth, we did, like, other than that board meeting, there wasn't a whole lot of work in that trip. And now that we're back, there's definitely a sense of, oh, I need to catch up. So some of it was involved in catching up on what's going on here. And I, I, I thank everyone for uh, communicating and uh, helping me keep the pulse. I don't feel like I, I did a very good job of having the pulse of our community while I was gone. It, it's, but I thank all of you for trying to help me with that as much as you could. Um, and I'm glad that we're in person and back, though. Um, and thank you for uh, the director Lopez for continued work at the state level. And thank you for uh, nominating me. We'll see if the other districts agree or not. <laughs> uh, for the legislative policy committee. With that, I think we are done. Our next uh, meeting is October 12th, the work session upstairs. And this meeting is adjourned.